Well, welcome back. It's 844. It is Thursday, April the 2nd. And we heard from Pulaski County Judge Executive a little bit earlier in the show. And now we have on the phone with us State Representative Ken Upchurch, representing the 52nd District of Kentucky, which includes our listening area, McCreary County, Wayne County, and a part of Pulaski County. Good morning to you, Representative Upchurch. Good morning, Amy. How are you doing this morning? Good. Thank you. Where are you calling in from this morning? I'm calling in from my home base in Monticello, Kentucky. Well, welcome home. Good let's, to be here. Let's talk about what happened yesterday in in Frankfurt. The House did pass what your press release called a bare bones budget that sets spending guidelines in Kentucky for one year beginning July 1st. So, Representative Upchurch, talk about the budget passing yesterday and the, the bare bones part of it. Well, the bare bones part of it is when we uh, start our budgeting process back at the end of last year, uh, the consensus forecasting group gets together and uh, gives us a set of numbers uh, that we can base our revenues off of. Uh, They give us a a very optimistic view, uh, a middle-of-the-road view, and a pessimistic view of what revenues uh, could potentially be over over the biennium. And so we were budgeting based on a middle of the road um, uh, budget forecasting uh, or a budget forecast. And then COVID-19 hit about the time that we had passed the budget and sent it over to the Senate. And during the uh, negotiations back and forth between the Senate and the House, they decided that, hey, look, this thing could get really bad. Uh, The economy is obviously uh, tanking. And so we've got to pair this back and use uh, the pessimistic numbers, which are the best numbers that we have um, going forward, but we really think that it could be worse than that. And so that's basically what we base this budget off of. When we sent it over to the Senate, we were increasing the seat formula for uh, students. We fully funded the pensions, and and uh, we're giving an across-the-board 1% raise to uh, all state employees, all teachers, cooks, school bus drivers, you know, all across the board. Um, and then when it when we uh, COVID-19 hit, uh, we started having to pare back some stuff. Uh, the raises obviously have uh, been shelved uh, for this first year of the budget cycle until we can kind of uh, see our way through. Uh, we've just passed a one-year budget. Normally we do a two-year budget, uh, but, but and we'll be back, you know, in session next year in 2021. Uh, so we're just trying to, uh, you know, see what we can do to get through this first year um, and see how it works. I mean, we're uh, state government's kind of like everyone else. Uh, we're we're just trying to figure it out and feel it, we'll feel our way through it. Can you talk a little bit about the education part of the the bare bones budget that was passed yesterday? Well, we still uh, still fully funded uh, the the arc of the actuarially required. Uh, contribution for uh, the pensions. Uh, we, we've done that. Uh, we had increased uh, the SEEK formula, which is a per pupil um, allotment that the schools get based on daily attendance. It was $4,000 uh, per student. We had actually increased that, uh, but we're flatlining it back to the $4,000 uh, in this budget for the first year. Uh, we had actually increased it in the uh, 2018 budget, I think, almost $20 a student. I think it's $19 or $20 a student. We were doing a, uh, another increase uh, as it left the house. Uh, we had uh, increased that as well. But because of uh, COVID-19 and all of the uh, uh, you know concern that it has with our, our revenue forecast, that we, we've just paired it back down to, to flatlining it at the, at the 4000 and the budget that was passed yesterday is for one year. But Representative Upchurch, if the situation with the COVID-19 gets worse here in Kentucky, we certainly hope that it doesn't. But just in the instance of, do you foresee the House and the Senate having to get back together to maybe revisit the budget or or talk about the future? Yeah, and I think that it's quite possible that we will be in a special session this year later on, you know, in the fall of the year, September, October, I mean, that's that's a possibility. Um, you know, we've given the governor some, you know, some authority to help kind of see our way through this from the executive branch. Uh, we passed, you know, the COVID relief bill uh, to give, you know, some employees uh, a little bit more flexibility, employers some more flexibility on, on, uh, on their businesses. Um, so there, there, it's just 
something that, you know, no one living today uh, that's under 100 years old has ever seen this. Um, and so we are just uh, trying to, just like everyone else, trying to feel our way through it. You know, it's a, it's a national, international pandemic. Uh, you know, President Trump and the, the Washington is, is trying to uh, see their way through it. Uh, every state in the uh, in the union is trying to see their way through it, and uh, you know, Kentucky is obviously, obviously in the same boat. Uh, we're just trying to, uh, you know, from, from a financial standpoint, but then from the, the health standpoint, I mean, we've got um, we're getting directives from uh, CDC uh, that's coming. You know, the governor has his press conference every day at five o'clock and gives new. Uh, guidelines, you know, the six feet apart, social distancing, uh, cover your mouth when you cough, sneeze, or wash your hands, you know, uh, that's very important uh, going forward. Uh, and I, I'm afraid that people, uh, some people may not be taking that seriously enough. Uh, you know, I've got a wife that's in health care. I've got a brother who's uh, uh, EMT. Uh, another brother who's a first responder, and it's it is just critical, critical yes. uh, that people follow these guidelines to stop help stop the spread uh, of this disease because it, it it's it's deadly. Uh, uh, you know, there's different. Evidently, there's different strains of it. Some people are asymptomatic. Some people, um, you know, they're they're on the on the ventilators. Uh, they're dying. Uh, and I'm afraid over the next uh, two weeks, uh, uh, next month, it, it could potentially get devastating. Another first that happened yesterday, we have State Representative Ken Upchurch on the phone with us. Representative Upchurch, was the way that you all voted as a House yesterday to pass the budget because you all, like everyone else, practicing the social distancing The legislators could not be all on the floor together, which you always are when you're passing a budget or legislation. So how did you all vote yesterday to pass this budget? Well, yesterday was probably the most unique day that I've spent in Frankfurt uh, during my time in Frankfurt. Um, We we're required to uh, by House rules to be on the floor when we vote. And so we had, and there's some constitutional provisions, uh, so we had to kind of see our way through that. We had legal staff uh, looking at it, some other attorneys, you know, giving us some direction. The National Conference of State Legislatures were giving us some guidance. Uh, And we settled on uh, a remote voting uh, procedure, uh, whereas uh, there's 100 members in the House, so when we convened at noon, House districts one through twenty-five uh, went in and voted present uh, from twelve o'clock to twelve ten, and got the packet that was on their desk and walked back to their office. And then the next set of uh, legislators, uh, and we went on and on like that for you know forty-five minutes until everyone had voted present and picked up the packets that were on their desk. Now, what was in that packet was uh, voting slips. Uh, based on what we were going to vote on that uh, yesterday. So, for example, uh, House Bill uh, 352, which was the budget bill, we had a slip uh, paper that uh, had House Bill 352 on it. We, uh, When it came time to uh, vote on that, we were back in our offices watching the proceedings on, the, uh, on our televisions or on our computer through KET. Uh, we would uh, print our name on it, uh, sign our name, uh, date it, put our district number, counties that we represent, and circle yes, uh, yay or nay on how we were voting. Then we actually took a picture of that with our phones and texted it back to uh, the floor leaders on the uh, House floor. And then when it came time uh, for uh, them to record our votes, they would the speaker would call on uh, the two floor leaders that we had designated to read off the votes and when it came time for uh, my vote to be read that uh, it would they would say the gentleman from Wayne 52 votes yes and that was communicated with the clerk of the house and then on the screen like normally when we're when we're there we push the uh, yes button or the no button and it would light up so the clerk actually 
uh, put that up on the screen so we could see how the vote was going on the screen. So it went like that all day long, and we voted on several pieces of legislation, you know, starting uh, right at uh, 1 o'clock, and it took about four hours to get through all the, uh, the votes yesterday just for uh. doing that. Normally, you know, a vote takes... You know, once you open up the board for mm-hmm. voting, it's it's over with in 60 seconds. I'm, I'm sure you and most state legislators never thought you would be texting in your votes. Hey, that is something that I've I just never dreamed of. And, of course, you know, we've never dreamed that we'd be living during you know, an international pandemic either. So uh, it's uh, definitely a, a day in history uh, for Kentucky. Uh, I was proud to be a part of it. Uh, not necessarily proud because of the circumstances that uh, mm-hmm. caused it, but it was definitely something that was uh, unique to Kentucky history. Well, Representative Upchurch, thank you for taking the time to give us a call this morning, and you and your family stay safe, and in the next few days, few weeks, we may be getting back in touch with you for any updates that you may have for us as needed. So thank you again well, for calling that, in. You all, you all stay safe, uh, stay six feet apart, wash your hands, and and uh, take all the recommendations, and I think we can uh, all look at this uh, 30 days from now and uh, say we got through it. We will, and you as well. Thank you, Representative Upchurch. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, thank you. That was State Representative Ken Upchurch on the phone talking about the budget that was passed yesterday and also how they voted on that budget, and we'll be back.